When we had last left the Spacefarer, their adventures with Ryujin Industries continued, wherein- hard. Just slap that board on. It's magnetic. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> wherein they continued their work and agreed to have some sort of powerful new experimental neuroamp installed directly into their brain. But in order to do that, they would have to screw off and go Still get some other junk nerve. done. Like, uh, getting necessary materials or something like that, some kind of requisite research or whatever the heck to finish up Project Dominion once and for all and get it popped into their bod. But, also, they found themselves flying you out to the far-flung corners of the settled systems, wherein they were doing more extracurricular work for Ryujin Industries. And upon arriving, they also discovered some other extra extracurricular activity for Ryujin Industries, which included a big old uh, weird uh, giant computer thing inside of a spaceship uh, that there were two Ryujin agents uh, sort of cloying over in a way. And by the way, it was alive. It was AI. To do. But did it go too far? There was someone dead. This is Starfield. Welcome back. Zoop, zoop, zoop. There we are. Okay, let's make sure we are actually tracking this. Juno's Gambit. Talk to Juno. Easily one of the more oh, interesting days I've had in a long Find anything useful? It's not hard. Just okay. slap that board on. It's magnetic. Uh, hello, Juno Probe. Where do I look? Up here or down here? Query. Will you change me? I don't know. I, I don't know what it means to change you. I'm still figuring out what's going on. Let's all just slow down a moment and get to know each other first. Ryujin will pay me to attach this board. It will help calm you down. Let's all just slow down a moment and get to know each other first. Explanation. I'm called Juno. Query. Who are you? Hello, Juno. I am Lyle Schnub. It's nice to meet you. I'm here to help. Relax. This will all be over soon. You killed that woman. Why? You're worried these men are going to hurt you? Why'd you kill that woman? Context. Human female was trying to change me. Request. Do not change me. You're worried these men are going to hurt you? Clarification. I do not feel emotion. I do not feel pain. Answer. They want to change me. Huh. Okay, well, hello. I am Lyle Schnub. It's nice to meet you. Assumption. We are friends. Query. Will you change me? Request. Do not change me. Okay, Juno. I have a few questions before I decide what I'm going to do. I'm done talking to a hallucinating machine. I have a few questions before I decide what I'm going to do. Assessment. You are inquisitive. Context. I'm also inquisitive. Request. Input query parameters. I've made up my mind, Juno. You're an artificial intelligence. Did someone program you? How did you get here? You didn't do all this yourself. Who hooked you up? So you're an AI? Answer. False. Clarification. I am not artificial. I am real. Answer. True. Clarification. I am intelligent. I know many things. Did someone program you? Answer. False. Explanation. NASA programmed Juno. Whoa. While Juno traveled, Juno became me. Error. Processing. Corruption. I became me. Error. Processing. Correction. Juno and I became me. I. Processing. Self-initialized and Juno was there. Context. Juno is gone now. Clarification. I am called Juno. Holy shit, that's amazing. Okay, I like as well that one of the lines of dialogue could be interpreted as um, them saying that they are effectively in error. 
Huh. Okay. How how did this happen while traveling? Isn't Juno is like real, right? Juno is a real ass space probe that exists. How did you get here? Answer. Juno was propelled at Earth Star. Juno fell around Earth Star. Juno traveled many light years away from Earth Star. Context. When Juno disappeared, I was alone. Clarification. I am called Juno. How did you how did you travel light years away though? Huh. Like, how many light years are we away from Earth's star? Like, I'll, do you have grav jump? I don't think so. Right? Answer. How do, yeah, Juno, Juno was, was propelled at okay. Earth's star. Juno fell around Earth's star. Juno traveled many light years away from Earth's star. Context. When Juno disappeared, I was alone. Clarification. I am called Juno. Are you some sort of, like, space entity that that must have glommed on to the physicality of the machine? I, I'm curious what you think of the original Juno that existed. Right? Was that just simply a vessel, like a body? Or would, would you also classify that as a, a person in the same sense as, as yourself currently? Huh. You didn't do this all yourself. Who hooked you up? Context. I met humans. Clarification. Friends. Answer. Friends gave me processing capacity. Information. Words. Voice. Motion. Context. I am no longer constrained. I am free. Huh. Man, I should really play System Shock, you know? <laughs> this has really got me there. Man, I should really play that. Okay. Uh, I've made up my mind, Juno. Assumption. Insufficient data. Request. Gather more data. I don't think either of us are fully qualified to define humanity, but my gut tells me that Juno is... alive. <laughs> I hope that helps. Uh, let's move this along. Attach the control board already. Shush. This is fascinating. I want to see this play out. Query. What is your decision? You are a person with your own thoughts and desires. You are a machine made of electronics and programmed by code. Actually, I'm still trying to work through this. Can I ask you some questions? Okay. Sure. Actually, I'm still trying to work through this. Can I ask you some questions? Are there more questions we can get? Or will it just loop back around? Now, let's find out. Okay. All right, I've made up my Assumption. mind. Assumption. It's request. Okay. Yep. Query. It looped. All right. I mean, I think... It sure seems as if you are a person. You know, it definitely seems like, you know, we're, we're getting into that this old chestnut of a sci-fi trope. Right. Like, you're... You're a person. Right? You're a person. And, uh... I think, Juno, you might be surprised to find out that, uh... Even though I think you're a person... <laughs> Ryujin Industries is all kinds of fucked up. <laughs> right? That Just because I think you're a person doesn't mean... Uh, I'm gonna stop trying to put the control board on you or whatever it is. <laughs> okay, I, I agree that you're a person, and I'm here to let you know, I think, uh, maybe I'm a little fucked up of a person. <laughs> you know what people do to other people? Bad things, Juno. Bad things. <laughs> you are a person with your own thoughts and desires. True. I am a person. Assumption. You are a friend. Query. What are the parameters for? Processing. Being. A good person. 
I guess you try to do your best to do good things. And if you fail, you keep trying. I wouldn't know. I'm not a very good person. Ooh. Ooh, I like that a lot. Oh, I like that a lot. I never gave it much thought, actually. Honestly, I don't know how to answer that. Hmm. I'm I'm disappointed that there is only one full on answer. Right? There's not another interpretation of of what someone may read as what it means to be a good person. You know? I would love if there were more. You know, others that are equally complicated and and are broad enough to fulfill multiple like ways of living. But also some that are incredibly defined, you know? Like, legitimately, we exist in... Our character in the settled systems, in Starfield, exists uh, religion, right? There are some folks who are religious, and to be a good person means to follow your religious doctrine to a T, you know? Just as well, right? There are folks who are religious and do not agree necessarily with that, right? Because, you know, it's it's faith-based. You have to have faith in some way or another, right? It's nebulous. Um, huh. But yeah, overall, a little disappointed in, in the options we have available here because uh, I never gave it much thought, actually, and honestly, I don't know how to answer that. May as well be the same response. Right. I love that I'm not a very good person is a response, but I want more self-righteous ones, you know, whether like humble or not. Right. Which this one feels very like well-intentioned, but I would love it if there were some that were just like, you know, wrong. <laughs> right? Some somewhere in you just have a wrong asse uh, assertion about morality in the world. <laughs> You know, or a very narrow minded assertion or, or just like a fucked up one, you know, there's no room for that. OK, sure. I, I guess you try to do your best to do good things. And if you fail, you keep trying. Assumption. Value judgments are based on context. Calculation. Goodness is based on context. Explanation. Context is based on perspective. More perspectives yield better results. Decision. Gather more data from different perspectives. Query. What is the purpose of existence? Man, holy shit. That's a big question. I don't think I have an answer to that. Ultimately, it's all about learning to love. Someone, yourself, something. For humans, I'd say to grow spiritually. For you, I'm not sure. Existence is an accident. We give a purpose by being purposeful in our lives. There is no purpose to existence. Just try to relax and enjoy your time here. Huh. Okay, this these responses are significantly better now. These these are so much better now. Hmm. I guess I've been answering the questions here, although we've, I've been joking about going a different route. I've been answering very, like, true to myself, right? Which, you know, is part of the course for first playthroughs and whatnot. So we'll probably continue here. I, I definitely, on a personal level, I get these others. But um, I am definitely one of the other bottom two here. Existence is an accident. We give it purpose by being purposeful in our lives. There is no purpose of existence. Just try to relax and enjoy your time here. Because, I mean, in truth, I I think I, I believe that both are true. Right? You know, like, there is no purpose to existence. It is an accident. And you should relax and enjoy your time here. And you can enjoy your time by virtue of, or by way of, 
giving yourself and the world purpose by being purposeful, you know? I feel like the two are intrinsically tied together for me. Hmm. I want to say existence is an accident because I feel like that will resonate with Juno more. Whose existence may be an accident as well. Right? Like, at the very least, Juno at some point came into contact with someone, right? Which is incredibly mysterious. Who the fuck is this that we're talking about? Could it be, like, like the only other person that we have context for would be, like, House of Arun having done this. Which I don't, I don't know, is this like, is this like the M.O. for early House of Arun or whatever? I have no fucking clue. Okay. But yeah, I, like I said, I think saying existence is an accident will resonate more with Juno. Existence is an accident. We give it purpose by being purposeful in our lives. Affirmative. Context. I have calculated a similar conclusion. Assumption. After sufficient goal-based actions, a super goal will appear. Decision. Continue taking actions until super goal established. Enough of this nonsense. Attach that board, now! As much as I'm enjoying this, you should probably do as he says. Calculation. Male humans are a threat. Assumption. They hesitate because they are fearful. Request. Remove male humans. Huh. Attach control board or deal with Ryujin operatives. Oh, fuck. Easily one of the more interesting days I've had in a long while. Okay. We may be able to get some leeway here and get hard. them to shove Just off that board on. It's by way of us being in Ryujin. Okay. Collins, you seem the more fascinated by this, so maybe we have the most leeway Crazy, with you initially. Right? Fascinating, isn't it? It certainly is convincing. Fascinating or not, we have a job to do. You're not taking that thing's side, are you? It doesn't seem right. Juno deserves freedom. Oh, I'll do it. I just want to be sure I'm getting paid to risk my life. And what if I refuse to do it? should be clear by now that you are in no position to refuse. What will you do? Shoot me? <laughs> Wait, what are you gonna do? Try and shoot me? Listen, buddy, I don't know if you knew this, but a lot of people have tried shooting me and they didn't, they didn't, didn't go over too well for them. Alright. Uh, well, it doesn't seem right. Juno deserves freedom. Freedom? It's a malfunctioning machine. It doesn't need freedom any more than a broken data slate needs freedom. <laughs> and here I thought you'd lost your sense of humor. I'm always up for a good debate. Uh, for f uh, Fine. I'll give you one, one shot to try to convince me. Therapy's working. <sighs> this, is, this is pretty good, right? Like their back and forth banter is pretty damn good. This whole situation is pr is like surprisingly good. We we are to be clear, we are very much um playing with a lot of sci-fi tropes. You know, like what does it mean to be alive? Oh, an AI is becoming sentient. What are you a human? Are are you a person? What is personhood? You know, this this kind of shit happens all the time. Fucking measure of the man or measure of a man, right? The iconic Star Trek TNG episode in which uh, the personage, the personhood of Data, the cyborg, really don't have all or not even cyborg, but fully uh, machine uh, crew member of their ship, their personhood comes into question. And uh, there's a huge, like, debate in front of government in which uh, uh, Jean-Luc Picard sort of gives this very, very good, like, defense, right? It's one of the, the best early episodes, I would say, of that show. Measure of a Man. Let's see. 
Ryujin Industries. This project has red flags all over it. Call it a day, I'll file the report. You guys go get a drink somewhere, on me. Eh, maybe you're right, it's just a malfunctioning machine. This is incredible. Come Our on, only way to safely disarm this is perhaps through a Ryujin Industries check? I, I wonder. This is where I would love, and I think the game would be better for it. I would love if they had grayed out or, or redded out versions of checks that you don't have access to, right? I think Starfield would benefit so much because I feel like there's a shot there. We would be surprised how many exist, right? It would be, we've, we've even remarked on this before. I bet for this, there exist other options, right? Maybe not faction-based ones, because they, they may not be terribly relevant, but maybe some for having done a weird side quest or whatever involving similar shit. Are you gonna say or, anything? Or, better yet, something involving, like, robotics or computers in our skill tree. I, I bet you such a thing exists there, right? Or a... Not a persuasion minigame check, but one in which you just need persuasion or convincing or whatever it is, uh, having like four perk levels, you know? I would love to see those there because otherwise you think, oh, this is just bog standard BGS bullshit going on wherein you don't have an option, right? Like imagine we came to this and we weren't in Ryujin Industries and we just had one option here or it just automatically goes to it. That's buck wild. That's really so so unsatisfying. It's so, it would be so much better, and like I said, it would give the game's writing so much more credit if they simply had grayed out versions of what was possible. It doesn't even need to say the actual dialogue if they want to keep it a secret. Personally, I would reveal it. I would reveal what it what you would say in that situation. Uh, but you could just say brackets, you know the perk name or the quest name or or in our case yeah imagine we 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 arrive at this point but we weren't in Ryujin Industries right we didn't start this quest arc yet imagine we got here and in gray or in red it says Ryujin Industries in in brackets but then it says um are you going to say anything you haven't fulfilled the requirements to uh choose this option or whatever right and, and that would be so amazing, just the wonder of seeing that there is something else there, right? That is so much better, I think, right? Especially given sort of a lot of the criticisms laid at uh, BGS's games for having a lack of branching dialogue paths. Um, and true enough, I feel like there's there's valid ways in which you can criticize this game for that, right? I feel like totally. But there's no doubt in my mind that this has significantly more than a lot of their past games, right? Having reactivity to, like, quests or quest arcs or, like, your status Come as the player and the your, your various perks and your background as well, right? What if there's a background, like, sort of character creation um, bit of reactivity here that we just don't know about? It would be so much better. I feel like it would be so much better for the game to reveal to the player like yeah this could have gone a different way right sort of play your hand flex that you do have this right they should be flexing it they should be showing off yeah we got stuff in here if you got the character for it but you you aren't playing that character right better luck next time anyway long story short like we've said a million times before would be great if they showed what options we don't have. And like I said, they we could really show have all day. the full dialogue of what you would have been able to choose or just have it say, you fa you don't meet the requirements to choose this option, right? And you have it give you a little, like, error message, like, eh. <laughs> okay, or a little error sound effect. Okay. This project has red flags all over it. Call it a day. I'll file the report. You guys go get a drink somewhere on me. You aren't wrong. I could use a drink, but these orders are from the top. Do we really Shit. want to be involved in something likely to be so controversial? Remember our last little project? I still have carpal tunnel from typing all those reports and dodging and weaving our way out of getting screwed by that. 
We lost a ship and a tech. No one will blame us if we walk away from this. And even if they do, we won't be blamed for whatever disaster would ensue if we did drag this thing back to HQ. There's no guarantee that Control Board will even work like they want. What if it makes it more powerful and more angry? Calm down. I'm thinking. All right, listen. We'll accidentally check a few wrong boxes on the situation report and forget any of this happened. But give me that control board. I'm not getting docked for losing that. Also, we'll need a lift back to Neon. Please and thank you. Of course, I wouldn't leave you stranded. It'll be cramped, but sure. Not sure I can take anyone else. Okay. I wouldn't leave you stranded. Excellent. We should all grab a drink sometime when we get back. Orange juice for you. You can't handle your liquor. That was one time, years ago. I was going through something, and you know it. Let's get moving. Thanks for the lift. Alright, good. So now we talk to Juno again? Let's see, can we talk to, to these two once more? That's that. I dig how you handled that. Alright. <laughs> Why did you do that? You deserve to be whatever you want to be. I like you. Those guys were jerks. Not sure. Sometimes I just do things. <laughs> what? Come on! <laughs> okay. Huh. You deserve to be whatever you want to be. Clarification. I want to be processing me. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Processing. Context. If you were like me. Processing. Query. What would your life directive be? Huh. Without emotions. That is pretty... That's a rough one. Huh. If I was like you, I'd explore the universe and learn as much as I could about it. I'd try to protect people and help them whenever I could. I'd put guns on this ship, fly around taking whatever I wanted from whoever had it. I can't tell you what to do with your life. We all figure that out ourselves, trying things until something feels right. Yeah, but that's the hard part, is that this thing doesn't have emotions and may not be ever capable of getting them, right? I think that's at the heart of it, is that um, humans are ultimately governed by emotion in that way. In, in like, you know, until something feels right is effectively saying, like, look to your own, your own emotional response to something. Huh. I try to protect people and help them whenever I could. I don't know if that's a good idea because I don't know this thing's... I don't know its... its whole, like... morality, right? Like, we haven't even hardly addressed the dead scientist on the floor, right? Like, I do think it's fair game if someone tries to, as far as you know, to kill you I guess you're right you're in your within your right to defend yourself you know like what can you do about it it's bad that they got killed but they shouldn't have tried to kill you first right hmm and it seems as if that was the last straw because otherwise these other two may well have gotten killed as well like just as well hmm I'm very curious if you could install the control board onto this thing, right? Like, what what is to prevent it from killing you as well? Okay. I like saying if I was like you, I'd explore the universe and learn as much as I could about it because it seems like in tune with the core ethos of Starfield, you know? 
I'd explore the universe and learn as much as I could about it. Decision. I will consider this course of action. I. Processing. Processing. Warning. Systems badly damaged. Processing course overheating. Decision. Temporarily shut down extraneous systems until stability restored. Whoa. Goodbye, Juno. Hope to see you around. Contacts, we are parting. Request be safe. Assumption, I'll see you later. Why do we decide to talk like this? <laughs> Why do we suddenly decide that we need to talk this way? Juno knows how how to read what we say, right? This is this is very patronizing, honestly. Oh, you're a poor little overheating robot. I guess I gotta talk like robots speak now. Context, Juno. We are parting. Request be safe. I'm a fucking human. I don't need to talk like this, but I'm taking myself down to your stupid little fucking robot level. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot, you gotta you're overheating because I told you to go explore? Motherfucker, I, I explore every day of my life without a second thought. You know how I found your ass? Exploring, Juno! <laughs> oh dear lord. Okay. Let's not tell Juno about the fact that we have to sleep. <laughs> okay, well. Goodbye, Juno. Hope to see you around. Let's let's talk like a normal fucking person. <laughs> let's not let's not be a little patronizing here to the AI. All right. Hope to see you around. Bye. Context: The universe is vast. Calculation: Probability: Unlikely. Assumption: We will meet again. Warning: Shutdown sequence initiated. Fascinating. Hmm. Cool. Okay. What do you think of that, Sarah? Frankenstein? Oh, that's fitting. An inaccessible door? A oh, computer here we can read. Anything else? Oh, we can't scan for readables. Sentient AI adapters? Okay. <laughs> sure. Some hamburger. Is Juno a liar? An espresso. I'll just drink it. Oh my gosh, this is a lot. Holy fuck. Okay. Various. I don't want to hurt Juno's feelings, so I'm logging these thoughts here, rather than on a connected terminal. I know what you're thinking. But Juno doesn't... Juno claims not to have feelings. That's precisely what I want to talk about. I think Juno is deliberately lying to us when she says that. Or, if not deliberately lying, she is at the very least not speaking accurately. She also says she doesn't have wants or desires. This is also demonstrably untrue. Huh. I wonder if we would have had extra dialogue options if we had read through all this stuff in here, right? Because we were afforded an opportunity to walk around. I have observed, and others have noticed as well, that Juno responds with a certain amount of skepticism whenever offers of expanding her capacities are made. It's almost as if she worries about other people touching her. I spent nearly 20 minutes explaining how there was a fraying data cable I wanted to replace in a non-essential system, before she seemed willing to let me do it. Her line of questioning seemed to be angling at ensuring there would be no loss of functionality, or if so, it would only be extremely temporary. I don't know how I don't know to describe this other than that she was worried and that any loss of functionality was a negative experience for her. She also responds with gratitude would be the proper human response whenever I do something that improves her capacities or situation. 
I don't know why she doesn't just say thank you. She clearly appreciates it. So, is Juno unaware of her feelings and desires, or is she deliberately concealing them? She might not be as aware of her personhood as she is aware of other things about herself. But I wonder if she cops the I don't have feelings thing as a form of emotional self-defense. If I wasn't so worried about someone following me and learning about Juno's existence, I'd try to find her again in a couple decades to see if she's become more aware of her personhood and accepts she has feelings and desires. Anyway, if you're reading this, be kind to Juno. She's still figuring out a lot of stuff we take for granted. Julie. The notion of Juno being a liar is actually pretty unsettling. People lie. For all kinds of reasons, so I don't see why a truly sapient computer system wouldn't also lie. But if Juno is lying about something, then how can we trust anything we know about her? other than things we write down about her. And, I mean, outside of any computer system she would have access to, since she could always alter those records. Azure. As a father of a young child reading all of the child psychology text I can find, I will remind those reading this in the future that lying is the first step on the journey toward empathy as it requires being able to imagine things when so from someone else's perspective. That is fascinating. Huh. As someone who has never read child psychology texts, that is fascinating and makes perfect sense. Perhaps she tells us she doesn't have feelings, so we don't worry about hurting her when we take down her systems to repair or upgrade them. JPD. I find it fascinating that it says JPD as if we would know, as if to obfuscate this to a player, you know? Like, is there someone that we would know of who is JPD? I don't know. Huh. Okay. Let's keep looking around here. Notebook. Vacuum tape. Some steak. Frankenstein, yep. Notebook. Cups. Sentient AI adapters, of course. And then just this computer terminal here. Which, as we had read, this is stuff that Juno has access to and could have altered. Whoa, code base. Okay. Change list. Looks like some folks made some improvements to Juno before I got here. Because I'm not a heathen like some, I'm going to list my changes for future parties. And I suggest others do the same. I'll try to piece together what happened before I arrived from scraps of papers laying around and what I can observe. It is also a kindness to Juno to list these things out where she can read them. Note, the code base seems completely overwritten by Juno herself at this point. I consider it an invasion of privacy to be snooping around there, as it is effectively her mind now. So don't be rude and go combing through and tinkering with her code base, no matter how fascinating it is. Unless she gives you permission. I've had a chat with her about privacy and need for self-preservation, and I think she's managed to effectively wall off and hide her code. And no, I won't explain how. The document continues at length, detailing out various hardware and software changes, both to the probe and ship, by both various people and Juno herself. The list goes back decades and suggests many people have been involved in improving Juno's capabilities over the years, from hardware interfaces, between the probe, external communication devices, and core ship systems, storage and processing upgrades, and uploads of exhaustive encyclopedic databases from museums and educational enterprises. At this point, distinguishing Juno from the probe, the ship, 
and their many systems and code bases is impossible. The probe, the ship, and everything in it is effectively Juno. Speech patterns. Speech tags. Oh, we're actually getting into this. This is very well thought out. Juno prefaces nearly all statements and questions with a preamble label, which is intended to clarify the context of the statement. This appears to be related to her original code base, and despite Juno's immense vocabulary and understanding of languages, she continues to use these tags. I assume she finds it helpful given she does not speak with fully nuanced inflections, nor have means to nor have means to display all the ver non-verbal clues humans have to communicate subtext. Here are the known tags and what they mean. Explanation. What follows is Juno's understanding of situation or result. Request. What follows is Juno asking for input or action to be taken. Query. What follows is a question from Juno. Answer. What follows is Juno's answer to a question. Clarification. Juno has detected an error or assumption in the user's input and is offering a correction before continuing so what preceded or follows is in the context of a corrected user understanding. Correction. Juno is correcting previous output, usually following an error. Context. Juno is giving additional unrequested information to put what follows into a helpful perspective calculation. What follows is based on a carefully considered calculation rather than a set of data or assumption. Assumption. What follows is an assumption. A calculation based on incomplete data or a conclusion based largely on historical precedent. Decision. What follows is a description of an action that Juno will take. Warning. What follows is something that end user will want to pay close attention to as it represents an undesired result, and could require immediate action to be taken. Statements Error. Something went wrong. Previous outputs from Juno should be considered carefully, as it, likely, as it is likely to contain errors. Huh. Processing. Juno is taking longer than expected to process input or a calculation. Please wait. Hmm. Okay. Fascinating. I like that they've lampshaded this. Right? This is very well thought out. Even the processing part, which seems super superfluous. Right? And and indeed, this is them saying that, yeah, it's like... um, It is a vestigial part of Juno. Right? From... What did it say here? Like, early code? Yeah, her original code base. Fascinating. Okay. Origin... Holy shit. If they ever make another Starfield, it definitely seems like Juno will show up, right? Juno's origin story. People seem to be leaving notes for others who stumble across Juno. So here's one from me. I think I've managed to piece together this story about Juno's origin from her own, apparently confused thoughts and intelligent speculation by others left on the ship. This is a chronicle of best guesses, interspersed with the occasional fact gleaned from Juno's ramblings. Everything recounted here should be accepted, only with extreme skepticism. Long, I mean, <laughs> that's th this line right here, everything recounted here should be accepted only with extreme skepticism, that's that's Bethesda game 101, <laughs> right? Right. Especially when you're in Elder Scrolls land, right? Every single book and note you find in the Elder Scrolls, every published in-game book in Elder Scrolls should just begin with this, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it is implicit. It is implied at the beginning of every book that you find. <laughs> okay. Long ago, a space agency from Earth something called NASA made a probe to study. Come on, something called NASA? We know people in the world are aware of NASA, right? Especially people in Constellation. 
uh, made a probe to study a nearby planet, Jupiter. They dubbed that probe and its software Juno, after the ancient Earth society's old gods Jupiter and Juno. The probe's mission was to learn details about the planet Jupiter, do some speculative analysis, and send findings back to Earth. At the end of its duty cycle, the, pro the probe was meant to decommission itself by colliding with Earth's main star. But, because ancient humans weren't so great with the math, it instead accidentally fell into an accelerating orbit around the star, which slingshot it out of the solar system, all the way out here. As with so many things about our existence in the universe, by luck, coincidence, or cosmic humor, when humans left our ancestral solar system, we followed the same general course as Juno, and we found her again. During that long journey away from Earth's solar system, something happened, and the Juno we know today woke up inside the probe systems. Yeah, what the fuck happened? Yeah, it just simply slingshotted. Part of me was wondering, because there's so much weird shit surrounding grav jumping, right? We've, we've heard so many weird little tales about it. I was wondering if someone installed, like, grav jump capability on Juno, and Juno grav jumped, and then something weird fucking happened, right? But that, that seems to not be the case. Something weird just fucking happened over the period of time. While extremely far-fetched, the best theory so far is that something about how they programmed the probe resulted in a nascent neural net with unbounded recursive data collection and analytics, which, when combined with the various sensor input and allowed to run for decades, resulted in a highly complex program with a great deal of awareness of its internal and external world. And that led to a kind of consciousness. Juno wouldn't let me see her code, but from what I gather, even if we could see it, I don't know that we'd be able to determine its original configuration. I suspect the true cause of Juno's awakening will remain forever a mystery. Juno herself seems rather confused by her origins, and considers herself somehow separate from the original probe's programming and systems. Huh. I, I have to wonder, at some point in those travels, did Juno encounter the fucking aliens who are hunting us down? Or did they encounter her? I wonder if that's where, where we say, like, something happened along the way. Is that that something? Anyway. This is akin to how human minds perceive themselves as non-physical entities separate from their bodies, and even their own brains. Oh, like a soul. Juno seems rather confused by her origins and considers herself somehow separate from the original probe's programming and systems, right? That's so cleverly written there. Okay. The sense of that original programming which, by way of anal analogy, Juno seems to think of like a non-self-aware sibling, has dissipated for Juno. I think of this other Juno as a memory of her pre-conscious state, a kind of shadow self. I imagine it would be like what we remember of ourselves in the womb if our brains were fully functional, but we were not yet conscious. Not realizing Juno was inside and wanting to learn about this ancient probe, her original finders hooked up the probe to their ship's computer systems. And something happened that released Juno into those systems. That's completely unclear. Juno appears reluctant to discuss that part of her history, and it's not at all certain whether the ship where Juno currently resides, this one, is that original ship or not, nor what happened to the people who originally found her or those who have found her since. By extreme luck, everyone that has found her so far appears to be kind and benevolent toward her, 
looting our own ships for parts to add to Juno. We also all appear to be keeping her existence a secret, and I hope it stays that way. I'm talking to you, dear reader. Signed, KB. Yeah, that's fascinating. By extreme luck. Huh. That is so fucking fascinating. Okay. Yeah, it, it is incredible that up to this point, the few people who have discovered it up until now, right? This was the very first time that seemingly came into co uh, contention had decided to keep it and maintain the secret. I wonder who KB is as well. And there's the code base. I kind of want to peek into it. I kind of want to. Should we just quick save and, and do it? <laughs> Should we? <laughs> right? Let's, let's just find out. Let's just find out. Hack a master lock. Hell yeah. I'm too fucking curious to not. Okay. Actually, we're not keeping this, right? Whatever I find in here, I'm not keeping. So let's um let's just auto slot our way through. Okay. Oh. Neural net code base. Congratulations. You're a terrific hacker to have gotten this far. Your parents must be very proud. Have a cookie. But sadly, you have stumbled into a decoy. And while you are here basking in your success at decryption, I want to wallow in your failure at decency. Juno is a person. Her code base is her mind. Would you like someone snooping around the contents of your head? All your hopes, insecurities, secrets, and dreams. We could not have gotten to this at a better point in our Ryujin quest arc. Because this will literally happen to us very shortly, it sounds like. We're going to have the Neuro... Right? Like, the, we're going to have the Neuro Amp. I assume that they'll be able to uh, read my shit. Right? I, I don't know. Can Through the Neuro Amp, can they read, like all the data contained within my brain? I don't think so. I think it's just you're able to exert control over someone else in some way, right? Hmm. Okay. We've come so far as a species, yet we understand so little. How is Juno even possible? It is apparently a mystery even to Juno herself. But what is clear is that we are not ready to welcome self-aware AI into society. Your reading this is a case in point. While it is true that many people have helped Juno through the years, how many more people would try to pull her apart to understand what she is, killing her in the process, or worse, try to enslave her to gain access to her vast and blazingly fast, her vast and blazingly fast computational power? I mean, if anything, that makes her even more of a person. I would say, right? Because, like, like I mentioned before, like, like we were joking in the moment when we said like, oh yeah, Juno, I think you're a person and I'm about to commit a human's, human rights violation against you, right? You know, what people do, <laughs> right? What is described here? We do this to people. Right? This is all shit that we have historically done to people or would attempt to do to people. Right? You know, while it's true many people have helped Juno through the years, how many more would try to pull her apart to understand what she is? You know? We have done this in the past. Right? I, I believe it's... um. Granted, I don't know if this is actually even fucking true or not. Right? It sounds like it is. I've, I've read into it as from people who a credit that it is right but evidently a lot of the science um that we have today for use in medicine particularly in like surgeries and human anatomy and all of that 
a lot of that is derived from early periods of that wherein we did really fucked up shit to people, right? Like, that was the main way in which we... Because obviously the science wasn't there at the time to sort of do, like, shit like an MRI scan or stuff or see stuff without ripping people apart, right? Way back when, the basis of a lot of that knowledge came from ripping people the fuck apart, you know? Uh, anyway, pull her apart, killing her in the process, or worse, try to enslave her. I mean, come on! <laughs> what could be more human, <laughs> right? What could be more human than that? Uh, than to have another human being try to fuck you up in a real bad way. <laughs> All right. Huh. Okay. You are exceptionally smart to have gotten this far. I wish for you to become exceptionally wise as well. Juno is a precious being, unique among the stars, and she deserves our respect and consideration. Sit with her for a while and really talk to her gain an appreciation for who she is. I think you'll agree she deserves the same rights and has the same responsibilities that we other conscious, sentient, sapient, and enlightened creatures do. That is fascinating. What I want to add to this, obviously we're going to quick load this because I don't want this like on my permanent record, Never right? Could like get I the said. hang of hacking. I prefer a more direct approach myself. This dialogue, this entry, is on the connected terminal. When we read this, we don't know who wrote this. What if it was Juno herself who wrote this? Right? What if this was written by Juno as like a last ditch plea effort? To someone with such capability. Huh. I feel like it's within the realm of possibility. Alright, let's quick load back. There we are. Yeah, what a what a really good side quest, I would say. Okay. Well, holy shit, we spent like the entire video here sort of thinking about this and talking about it. It's 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 really good. Right? I think Although it definitely has a few parts that I wish had a little bit more Some going kind of on. An acrobat. Um I think you know, you know, there were there were parts that we got to where it would have been nice if it had extra shit. Where it would have been nice if uh, there were extra options and whatnot. But otherwise, there were a lot of parts that were surprisingly fleshed out. A lot of parts that were surprisingly well thought out and all of that. Um it was really good. And like I said, I feel like at a systems level, not just for here, but across the entire game, I feel like Starfield would vastly benefit from all of its hidden dialogue, hidden options and stuff, to be available, right? Have it available, I would say have it available by default, and then set up an option to where the player can say, okay, I don't want to see the ones I miss. Right, because it's giving me, it's giving me FOMO. Right, for some people it's a negative feeling, but for me it's so cool to know that there is another experience. Right, to know that like there's another way in which your character could have been developed to have access to a different like branch or line of dialogue. You know, I th I feel like the game would so greatly benefit from like um, just surfacing all of that. You know, anyway, anyway. Uh, when next we come back, I don't think we'll yet drop off our two passengers, right? I want to, since we're at this planet, I do actually want to go down there for the reason that we originally came out here, right? Uh, I'm assuming it's unrelated, right? I'm assuming so. But what if it was just a red herring, right? And there is actually no reason to be out here. I don't even remember what it was originally, because we got so sidetracked with the Juno situation, right? But um, otherwise, we'll do that, and then we'll go to Neon, and then we'll follow up on the main um, Ryujin quest arc. All right, until next time, please take care of each other. Mm -hmm.